The views and opinions expressed in the following paid program are those of the host, callers, and guests, and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of this station, its management, or owners. Securities offered through Kestra Investment Services, LLC. Kestra IS, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Kestra Advisory Services, LLC. Kestra AS, an affiliate of Kestra IS. Capital Advisory Group, Inc. is not affiliated with Kestra IS or Kestra AS. Neither Kestra IS nor Kestra AS provide legal or tax advice and are not certified public accounting firms. You work hard for your money. For the next hour, you're going to learn how to keep what's yours. Capital Advisory Group presents Keep What's Yours. Here are Josh Gilbert and Jeff Zufall. Hello and welcome to Keep What's Yours with Jeff Zufall. I am Josh Gilbert. This is Jeff Zufall. He is the Senior Tax Strategist and Wealth Advisor with Capital Advisory Group. Hello, Jeff. Hi. Happy Saturday. It is that time of year. Everybody yes. should probably <laughs> legally have their W-2s. Yes, they should have W-2s, 1099s. Um, the only thing we're waiting for is 1099s from your brokerage statements. Um, kind of that expectation somewhere between the 12th and the 18th is what they're saying. Um, K-1s could be March, April, kind of out there. Just depends. Um, and what's a K-1? Just very K-1 briefly. is uh, if you had like a, if you had any uh, uh, partnerships, um, anything that's a pass-through, S-Corps can have a, a, a version of a K-1 on there. Those are typically very late. If you bought a real estate investment trust, um, there's a K-1 that's kicked off on some of them. Um, and those usually, the, the partnerships are very always late. Um, they may not, it might be the end of April. It could be some of them even show up in the summer by the time that they do the calculations and get it put right. Um, but typically, most people, K-1s are going to be generated from some type of a trust, any pass-through investments. But they do show up right at, you know, April 10th, ready to go. Yeah. Um, so that's the only thing is if you ever have one in the past, everyone's like, oh, no, not that dreaded K-1. Um, but, again, if you get your brokerage statements, your t- typically they're 1099 dividends, DIVs, um, look in the upper right-hand corner, and if it uh, says final, you're good to go. File your return. If it says contingent or preliminary or something down that path, hang tight a week or two and see what they say. Because they could adjust it. You tell everybody, just hang on to your stuff, collect it, uh, you know, get it ready to go, but don't necessarily pull the trigger because you might have a contingent. Yes, or um, preliminary, and they change preliminary. $5 from interest to capital gain or capital gain to dividend or something like that and make an adjustment on that 1099. If you've already filed your return, e-filed your return, you literally have to amend your return over a couple of dollar oopsie. Yeah. Um, so make sure that it says final um, and then go from there. And doing our taxes, and we talk about this every week, doing our taxes is not fun. It's not easy. Yes, it <laughs> <laughs> it's fun and easy for someone like Jeff who spent a career doing it. Uh, it's not fun. It's not easy. Uh, the price that it costs to get Jeff to do your taxes for you is 100% worth it because yes. it's not really that much money when you really think about the grand scheme of things. A um, couple hundred dollars, it might yeah. go up if you've got a, a very... I mean, our, our we, we basically start around two and a quarter for mm-hmm. a basic return. Um, and then if you have a bunch of other forms, 1099s and you know dividend statements and It'll capital go gains, there. it goes up from there. But look at what it costs to buy a, uh, you know, say an online provider um, and your time that it takes yes. to... Set it up, key it, review it, make sure it gets e-filed, and the onus is on you. The time that it takes. Why would you want to waste your time on the weekends on, you know, in March when you've got St. Patrick's Day parades to go to? And, you know, uh, in February when you've got Mardi Gras parades to go to? Um, or just life to be lived. Exactly. Why, why, you know, waste your time and, you know, it's going to take Jeff. Uh, a little bit of time to do your taxes for you, but it would take you a lot of bit of time yes. to do your own taxes. So the last thing that I think people want to do is their own taxes, but I think after that is to send in an amended yes. tax return because you did it wrong. Maybe you, you didn't wait long enough. You you missed the form. The missed form, the form came late right. for whatever reason. Yeah. So now you're doing an amended 
tax return. And that just seems like, you know, oh, we got to do this all over again. <laughs> so uh, just be patient. Collect as much as you can. Give Jeff's office a call and maybe go and see him uh, at the end of the month or, or sometime in March. Yeah. And you guys can get together and figure out the best way. And and my favorite part about going to see you is I can tell you all the things. And I can be completely honest with you, Jeff. Yes, you can. You have to be. (laughs) Yeah. Say, look, I've got, you know, some money coming in over here. I got some money coming in over there. Is there anything we can do to minimize my tax burden? Exactly. That's that's the name of the game. There's always something that you can do. Yes. So just keep in mind. That it's not expensive to have Jeff do your taxes. And while he's looking at them, he can make sure that your withholding looks correct. He can make sure that you're having enough taken out for 401k or for a Roth. What is is the pay yourself? Pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. You can make sure that you're set up for, you know, 20, 30 years down the road. And he can also tell you, hey, have you taken advantage of a a HSA, health Mm -hmm. savings account? Have you taken advantage of the flex uh, savings account. These yeah. are the things that are you doing the um, the Missouri most the exactly. Five twenty nine. Yeah. If you your, have kids, yeah. your kids' education. <laughs> if you're doing it and you don't have kids, then you need to stop. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> no reason to do that. Right. So, and you know, it's like, what do I do if I want a Missouri most, but um, you know, I don't necessarily know if my kid is going to go to college. Well, maybe there's something else out there that you exactly. can start doing. So there's always something that you can do that is tax beneficial to you. And if you don't have Jeff on your side helping you, walking you through it, holding your hand, you're going to miss something. You're not going to take advantage of the tax savings that are out there for you. And I'll just give you an example. We did an FSA for my son's um, schooling for his daycare. And we started it. Jeff told me about it in May. We started it in June. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the year, uh, I should have been joyous and said, well, you know, we got six months of, of tax keepings yes. to, um, you know, to, to show for this. But I was mad because we didn't get a full 12 month. Yeah. yeah. So from now on, I'm starting all of my, my years off saying, Jeff, what more can I be doing? <laughs> So I could take advantage of 12 months of tax savings rather than kick this off in the summer or get yeah. started in September. Do it now so you can get the whole – take advantage of the whole year. Yeah. Rather that's, than – That's the game. Be like me and be – oh, we'll get it started in, in April. No, <laughs> don't wait until April. You just lost out on three months of tax savings. So that's out there. Give Jeff a call. 636-394-5524. 636-394-5524. Five five two four Capital Advisory Group Capital Advisory GRP dot com. Now, news of the day. What are we looking at as far as what's going on in Washington D.C.? So apparently, <clears throat> our a, our new child tax credit um, is up and going. It's approved. So one of the worst jobs to have in the world today is a coder or a uh, you know computer programmer for tax software. Um, because they are under the gun to get this recoded, and it's ready to go. So literally the 29th of January was the first day to e-file. The problem is is they did not vote on this or didn't pass until last Friday, um, a week ago Friday. Um, so probably next week, if you have children, you can start to fire up your returns just because that has to be coded back into the new system. Um, or the, the, the new law has to be coded into the current system, which has already been put out. Um, so there, if you do your own return, run an update before you really s- submit, see what happens, and it should adjust it going forward. Do you think that uh, – and this is giving extra money for those of us that have kids. Exactly. Uh, and we'll talk about and how it, much and it, extra. And it's, ro- it's retro to 2023. So we kind of thought it would be 24 when it would fire up, but it's not. They're taking it back to 2023, bringing it forward. Um, the income levels are $400,000 uh, of income if you are married filing jointly, and then 200000 the way they reference it for all others. So that single head of household, anything else. So if we've got kids and we're married, we file jointly. If we make over four hundred thousand dollars, we don't get the child it tax starts, credit. It starts starts to phase out. For phase every thousand dollars over four hundred, it'll take fifty dollars of the credit back away as you go forward. And so, what what are we at now? Uh, during the pandemic, we've been talking about um, 
increased child tax credits. But what is it? Has it been for years? Two what, grand. Two you grand. Two thousand dollars a kid, straight across the board, under seventeen. Um, and then when we went in COVID era, it jumped far between zero to seven was thirty six hundred, and then seven to seventeen was I guess three grand. Um, and so now what they're talking is it should increase it by a couple of hundred dollars per child, far 23, and then it's indexed for inflation 24 and 25. So, and along with that bill comes some business stuff. So anybody that uh, owns a business, basically you're going to see the accelerated dis- de- depreciation or Section 179, um, which basically is when you purchase equipment. Um, and I'll make the example, let's say that you're a printer and you need to buy a million-dollar printing press. You say, oh, I don't want to depreciate that over the next five or seven years. I want to take it today. Um, basically, that's back into the game for 2024 going forward. But previous years, they started to discount, if you want to call it that. And the reason being is a lot of, um, I'll call it uh, high-end SUVs, mm-hmm. um, Escalades, um, you know stuff like that that were 120 grand. That uh, that uh, Lincoln Navigator. <laughs> Lincoln Navigator. It's a hundred thousand dollars. They make the cut from gross vehicle weight as equipment, if you want to call it that. But they are a luxury SUV that you drop into your company and take a hundred and twenty thousand dollar write off that year. Um, they started. They caught on. IRS kind of caught on to that, and they've started to phase that out a oh, little bit. Oh, people were doing that. People oh, yeah. were, were buying luxury Completely. SUVs and claiming your, that it was your corporate heavy duty equipment. Your corporate vehicle. That's yeah. what you drove day in, day out. Um, and again, so what they did was in twenty two, um, it got reduced to eighty percent, and then twenty three got reduced to sixty percent, and it's back. Uh, back to one hundred percent. So. Um, go to your local uh, auto is, dealer, right. and, is there a and those things are rolling off a lot today. Is there a provision <laughs> in this thing, in the new one, that protects against people not, doing this not with their what we've luxury? seen? Okay, so um, but there is it's a, it's a luxury SUV scenario. You got to put the VIN VIN number in there, and kind of gets yeah, they'll, they'll catch it back and sure. come back because that's what they're trying to do. Because but again, if you are a contractor. And you buy F-350s or F-450s on a regular basis. They're every bit of 100 grand plus. Um, that's true equipment. Not like you're going to go on date night, you know, in your F-450, you know, and, and brush the mud out of the way. Oh, just we'd go down to the streets of St. Charles <laughs> on a Friday night. And it's the world's smallest parking lot. And I'm trying to pull out an, an F-250. It's great. <laughs> So, uh, all right. You, yeah, didn't, you couldn't have taken the smaller up, car yeah. <laughs> today. It's a tight parking spot. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, no, I get that. Um, is this something where, uh, you know, it, it seems, tell me if I'm wrong, it seems that maybe the Democrats wanted to get the child tax credit, which clearly they have been for the past couple of years, and maybe the Republicans had wanted to get this business tax credit Very possible. Back in. Very possible because it was a bipartisan bill. They um, worked on it together. Yeah. There was a Republican um, from Missouri who spearheaded this and a, a Democrat from Oregon who put this together. And apparently they've been working on it for months and it was getting, you know, volleyed back and forth as they went forward. But they did they did take it all the way to the end zone and get it pushed through. I'm, I'm getting lightheaded here. They – this. Politicians compromised? Yes, apparently there was. Well, someone, <laughs> someone catch me, I'm falling. You know, it, but this yeah. is how it's supposed to work. And, mm-hmm. you know, congratulations to the. Yeah. The, it took them, took them way longer what they thought because there right. were comments well, of course. at the end of December saying, hey, we're not giving up. But everybody's like, well, tax season is going to start in 30 days. So what do you do if we're already deep in tax season? And then you and pass they said, this we'll bill. make it, we'll make it retroactive. And it, it's retro. So, How about that? Yeah. So if you're, if you're listening to the show and you listen every week, we've been telling you, wait until something moves on this because this will change. How you do your taxes? Sure. If, if you've got kids, it's going to give you a, a, a higher credit. If if you're within the income thresholds, you're okay. Right. Um, if you're over the income thresholds, don't worry about it. You won't get it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This doesn't pertain to you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you, you got your whole other yeah. World there's of a whole another issues out there. Um, but uh, this is good. This is good news. Uh, number one. We do know that Congress can work together and pass things that yes. help us. Yeah. And number two, uh, if we've got kids or we've 
we've got small and now does this bonus depreciation does that help small business does it help big business no, sm- small business mid-sized business um, okay. is, is predominantly who's using it the big corporations and big and corporations have a whole okay. another so spectrum ta- of whole stuff that, 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 yeah, that, yeah. that, that gets put in play but this would help your your average person buying equipment um, you know, it's it's a huge, huge perk. I love it. Families yeah. and, and small to mid-sized businesses. Yeah. that's We all win. Name of the game. Right? Yeah. So that's great news. And uh, when you go and see Jeff, ask him about it uh, and remind him how many kids you have. I only have one. But does the, <laughs> does the cat count? Nope. Can't do no. that. Mm. There was, I saw something somebody put out there, and it was the canine, what was it? Had something to do with the 1099, the canine tax return. I thought it was kind of funny, and then I looked at it. I was like, "Somebody's probably going to try and file this." Yeah, you know, it was the face of a return, but it was a canine. It was for your animal. <laughs> what about if if there's service animals? That this is a you know, that's gets, why I love this show. That gets off into another yeah. little dimension where there are deductions for it for training for their their upkeep. Um, but again, your pet iguanic, you can't say that that's a you know your Sir, I, your yeah. service animal. Um, I can't fly without them. Yeah, I think most of the airlines have cut it back down to dogs as service animals only. Um, Have you seen that one where there was a horse? Yeah. <laughs> like, one, like a little Shetland pony? Yeah. Uh, a peacock? Yeah, there was a, what was the one? There was a squirrel? There was a pet squirrel that they said was right. a service animal. I mean, all kinds Did of stuff. Did he wear the little vest? Uh, yeah. I don't want, I'm not making light. Uh, no, 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 no. Just... <laughs> of course, but uh, it does seem like it has gone into a weird yeah. area. But uh, if you have a service animal, there yeah. are tax deductions that you yeah, can take. Yeah, because there's going to be a company that's going to train it. I mean, the training is, that's is gonna, very is, expensive. It's crazy cost. Mm-hmm. So they're going to get it up and going. That's a whole other business, and they're going to hand it off to you. That's your service dog as you go. So, yes, there's there's all kinds of stuff. And you wouldn't know about it unless you had a tax guy, Jeff That's right. Zufel. Help you out. And we're going to talk about um, trying to file on your own today. Uh, I just saw another article that says, hey, if the government has all of our information, why do I have to submit a tax return? So we'll get you to try to answer that later. The answer <laughs> is very easy. Yes. It's, it's because <laughs> – it's because certain companies wouldn't exist. Exactly. Uh, and, <laughs> There's but, a huge lobby group. <laughs> right. But the point is all those commercials that you see about filing your taxes, those are companies that have uh, very well-paid lobbyists on Capitol Hill. Very well. Preventing us from having the simple tax return or the you know the easy tax return. But Jeff is here because those people exist. Yes. <laughs> now, if we had a simple tax return, we wouldn't need you. Hypothetically, and no. you'd be playing golf every spring. <clears throat> <It'd> be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the businesses would be here. Obviously, the well, small sure. businesses that that tax return's never going to get easy. But yeah, um, if they did something. I mean, a flat tax. They talked about having it on a postcard, flat tax, all that stuff. It just will never see the light of day. They've been talking about it since Reagan. Yeah. In the 80s. Yeah. And, and, it, and if it was going to happen. It would have happened a long time ago. It would have happened a long time ago. So Jeff is here despite the fact that we all want a simple tax return. We all want a postcard. We all want the government to just send us a letter and says, hey, you yeah, owe us. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. But until that day, Jeff is here to make our lives easier. Capital Advisory Group, Capital Advisory GRP. Dot com 636-394-5524. Full disclosure, Jeff is my tax guy. He's also my financial guy. Yes. Uh, and I go to him and he um, tells me the things that sometimes I don't want to hear. Yeah. Like how I'm going right. to have to probably work until I'm in my 80s. No, I think it's like 78. So oh, yeah, oh, it's right. gone down. <laughs> uh, so things have gotten better. Uh, but I'm going to go and see him and just say, hey, I've noticed that on my paychecks every two weeks, there's a little bit of, of extra money left over. Yes. I want to make sure that if I can still afford groceries, pay the car insurance, pay the mortgage, mm-hmm. if there's still money left over for that, I want to sock it away. And uh, this is my dream. I mentioned it to you off the air, Jeff, but I'm going to tell the listeners again. I want not to have a college fund for my son necessarily. Mm-hmm. I want him to have a fund that he can go out and when he's 25 years old, maybe post-college or whatever. Buy a Harley? No. <laughs> buy a two-family <laughs> flat. Yes. Maybe in South City mm-hmm. that he can live in one, owner-occupied, rent out the other one. Yes. And then one day when he meets a, a beautiful young woman or a, a handsome young man, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that he uh, can move into his first starter house 
all by himself, and now he owns a property that he's renting out to yes. two different making income. I wish somebody would have done that to me, but I want to be able to protect it from himself. Yes, <laughs> in case he does want to say, you know what, Dad, that account that's that's there for that two family flat in South City, I want to buy a Harley with it. I oh, that or, it. or or say, hey, I inherited money. I'm going to move to Hawaii for a couple of years. Yeah, and I'm see what, blow it all. What and, happens? And, and you come back later and go, wow, what was that all about? Yeah, well, I mean, he can move to Hawaii as long as he takes me <laughs> with him. So mm-hmm. I want to uh, put my money and, and make it earn stuff for my son's future. And if I've got a little bit left over, where do I even put it? So Jeff yeah. can help you with that stuff yes. as well. 636-394-5524. Get yourself set up. Get your kids set up. Yes. And maybe even, by extension, your grandkids exactly. are set up. I mean, that's where we say, hey, if you don't have kids, you can't have a 529. Not necessarily true. Uh, grandkids, nieces, nephews, um, cousins, you could you could put money in a 529 for anybody. Um, you would be the owner of it, but it would be for that child's benefit when they go to school. One quick question before we go to break. 529s. Can I do one on my pay- paycheck and my wife do one on hers? Hypothetically, you don't really do them through paycheck, but you would. You could create your own. So you would create one. She would create one that could be for the same child. And it, it's not uh, one per um, Social Security number? No. It's not how it works? So no. I could there do could one. Grandma yeah. could do one. Uh-huh. Grandma be, on the other side. Whoever puts one. the money in is the one that gets the tax deduction gotcha. or the adjustment to the state return. But um, then when uh, they go to spend it on school. It's really for their benefit, so it's shot strike straight to the school. You know, when a bill comes due, they reach in and say, hey, I need, you know, nine grand. 9000 bucks is sent from the 529, completely tax-free. kicks back 5% of 5% it. for contributions up to $16,000. Does the state of Illinois have anything yes. like this? Yes, the same. Same thing. They're a, little bit, they're a little bit higher tax rate than Missouri, but you get a, still the same concept of 5% state it, credit. it grows like a Roth. Exactly. It grows so tax-deferred. 10 years down the road, it's, you know, let's hope it doubles. But yeah, as long as it gets taken out and put towards school, I don't owe any capital gains on that. Yes. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. So, do they have one for two family flats? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that then. they don't. But um, we've just done the first, the new tax law this year basically states you overfund a 529 plan. Um, everybody's like, oh my gosh, you got to take it out, pay taxes and penalty because it wasn't used for higher education. We have done our first. Uh, say, distributions from the 529. We've done four of them uh, last couple of weeks where they're overfunded. The child's, I say child, they're uh, adult now, um, are out of college. They got a full-time job doing they didn't thing. Use, they didn't use it all. They didn't use it all. We got $130,000 sitting in the account. And if you get a, a, a college scholarship, if yeah. you uh, join the military and use the yeah. GI Bill, you don't have to you pay You don't have school. to pay. Maybe you went to a community college and saved money and for saved two a years, ton. yeah, and then went to your four year and got your degree. You didn't use it all. What do you yes. do? So now in twenty twenty four and beyond, you get to take a distribution to a Roth. So it's a transfer to a Roth, non taxable, and whoever the beneficiary, the child, in a sense. <clears throat> so they could do seven grand. Um, up and it to, creates a Roth for them. Yeah, creates their own Roth. Just like a regular Roth, not mm-hmm. a, not it needs to be used for yeah. education. Roth. Non-taxable. So and it's up to $35,000 lifetime max for that one beneficiary. I can't move it back into my Roth. So that's what we're waiting to see. Uh, we were kind of assuming that, but then who says that you couldn't do your distribution this year, and I say like right now to the child, change the beneficiary next month, send it to the cousin who is now the beneficiary, then send it to yourself and start to liquidate the account over a 12-month span. Um, I don't think they're going to allow you to do it, but we also haven't seen any ruling or guidance on this just yet. But give it six months, and we'll know what the game is. So interesting. <laughs> so here's the thing. If you've got a 529 and you didn't use it all, maybe yeah. your kid got a college scholarship. Maybe, uh, like my son, he's going to be uh, the kicker on the football team. There you go. Get a full ride. <laughs> um, then you need to know, well, how do I liquidate this? How exactly. do I move it? What are my options? What are the options? Non-taxable. I mean, if you just took it out, you're going to pay a penalty. You're gonna you pay, pay taxes. tax and penalty on the gain going mm. forward. So just so. leave it there. Call Jeff, 636-394-5524, mm-hmm. 
and say, Jeff, this is my situation. How do I get it out? Where do exactly. I put it? What can I do? Yeah. And you'll walk everybody through it. That's the point. You need somebody walking you through this stuff because, number one, didn't even know a 529 existed before I started talking to Jeff. <laughs> and now – I know all the different things that you might be able to do with it. Yes. That could be tax beneficial to me, to my family, and, you know, to the grandkids that I don't even have yet. That's right. (laughs) And that's what it's all about, generational wealth and making uh, sure that you leave this world at a better place for your loved ones. Yes. And making sure that the government doesn't get their hands on it. Doesn't get it, exactly. Too much of it. Yep. I uh, don't mind paying taxes, but I don't want to pay a penny more yep. than I absolutely have to. Legally obligated to. <laughs> Capital Advisory Group, Jeff Zufall, will be back right after this. Keep What Yours continues with Josh Gilbert and Jeff Zufall. Back on the show, back to Keep What's Yours with Jeff Zufall. Give him a call, 636-394-5524. In the break, we were just talking about something. And like I said, Jeff is my tax guy. Jeff is my financial advisor. Jeff is where I go. It's beneficial to have one person be both. Yes. Because you don't have to you know, worry about having to consult with someone else. Typically, what I hear is, you know, oh, this guy did this. Um, told me to go talk to my tax guy. The tax guy goes, "What? What are you doing?" You know, right? And, and they don't know. My the game financial plan. guy told me to take this money out. Yeah. And then the tax guy <laughs> is like, "That's no, insane! Don't do that. Here's the tax that you generate." You right. know, so it gets it gets into this. You know, you got two different uh, attitudes or two different directions on it, and it gets very confusing for people. Whereas we're all in one in a sense, if you want to call it that. So if somebody says, "Hey, I need thirty thousand dollars to go do this." I'm going to say, great, if you take it, it's your money. You can take it. Don't get me wrong. But if you do that, this is what it's going to cost you. So here's, really, here's the tax burden. Yeah, you think you're getting 30 but it cost you, you know, $38,000 to net that money. That's an issue, yep. you know, and it stunts your overall growth down the road. So is it really worth it? Well. And in some cases, yes. In other cases, no. I've had at least three harebrained schemes that I brought to Jeff. <laughs> and I said, Jeff, should I liquidate my mm-hmm. – my retirement fund. And you said, no, yeah, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, so that's why Jeff is beneficial because he does both sides of it. And I was talking to my sister-in-law. She lives out in San Diego and we were talking taxes and finances. And she said, um, that's what I need. She said, I need someone that does both the financial and the tax. I'll go this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have the rain stuff. Yeah. No, not yet. I'll wait, I'll wait a week. <laughs> we'll wait oh, one more week. Uh, but we're here in the state of Missouri, and uh, there's some new stuff going through, and they haven't finalized this, but this is the new plan. We've heard about in St. Louis County, property tax freeze mm-hmm. if you're over a certain age. St. Charles has already done it. Yes. St. Louis City is talking about doing it. What, how does this work in the state of Missouri wants to make it a statewide thing? Yeah, so now they're going to say it's statewide. So the, in the past, there's a couple things that took place. I believe the, the bill was $301 million of lost revenue is what the state is saying that they're going to lose on these couple of provisions. First off, if you have a – I'll call it a, a public pension. So if you ever worked for the city of St. Louis, if you worked for MoDOT, um, if you were a police officer and you were getting your pension through their benefits, when they pay you that in the past, depending upon your just gross income, the bulk of it is exempt from state tax. Now they're saying that they're going to add Social Security to that mix. So you're going to, it's going to reduce your Social Security, the taxable Social Security on the state side also. So, And then the third perk is – the state is trying to make this a mandate straight across the board that they will freeze all uh, property tax. Um, I haven't seen the provisions on it, but like St. Louis County basically says the house is less than like 400000 um, You're over age 62. They're going to freeze it at 2024's numbers, whatever they may end up at. Oh, 2024's numbers. Yes. So, so whatever tw- they owe at the end of this year. Not owe, but what it's assessed at. Assessed at. Because what yeah. you owe oh, is okay. based upon December 31st of 23. Gotcha. Is what you'll end up paying on. Um, <clears throat> so you go, all right, are we going to see our tax bills skyrocket through the roof this year? Well, $301 million. Uh, That's what they're saying the shortfall will be. That's the hole that gets blown in this. And and go back to state pensions, people that get paid by the state. They worked for the state Mm -hmm. for years, and now their pension is through the state. Social Security, that's 
That's yeah. through. Um, so before it was just strictly the, the I'll say the public pensions that are out there, um, teachers, um, you know, you worked for MoDOT. Depending upon where your income was, the higher your income, the less that you got. But normal, I say normal people, if you want to call it that, uh, the bulk of it was exempt from state tax. You had to pay federal tax on it, but you got an exemption on the state. Now what they're throwing in is Social Security payments. So if Social Security comes in, so let's say you had – because the two don't mix typically, mm-hmm. <laughs> where you have a state pension and you have Social Security, um, other than if it's you know husband, wife type of a setup, one gets the pension, one gets Social Security, because typically you don't pay into Social Security at some of those positions. Teachers don't, you know, et cetera. But what they're saying now is the pe- public pension is exempt, the bulk of it, and then your, part of your Social Security is exempt at the same time. So I, this is the question I've always had about uh, state pensions and the state paying us. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the state pays me mm-hmm. if I'm a state employee. But then they turn around and say, we need 5% back. Yes. And it's like, well, <laughs> why didn't you just take it out? To start with. Before and- you even gave it to me, you know? And that's just something I never understood. But now you're saying that uh, parts of state pensions will be exempt uh, from state taxes and parts of our Social Security yes. will be exempt as well. depending upon where your income thresholds are. Mm-hmm. So if you make – if you do very well for yourself, even in retirement with other items, you're going to get less of an exemption. Uh, but, uh, again, normal people, the bulk of it is going to be exempt. So my dad was a teacher for years, mm-hmm. Ferguson Florissant School District. Yeah. Uh, he's got a pension. Mm-hmm. Will most of that be – Parts of it, again, depending upon where their adjusted gross income is. Federal government out. take a tax on it? No. They, 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 you pay full boat. <laughs> oh, yeah, for that. Okay. But just the state. Okay. State of Missouri. All right. So, so uh, and then with this uh, property tax freeze, we'll talk about that again in just a second and see who qualifies. But there's a lot of money that goes – you know, a $300 million hole – Goes to well, it's the school districts get the bulk. So if you're St. Louis County, you look at your uh, uh, property tax bill. Second page, it gives you a breakdown. I think it's special school district gets the bulk. Whatever local school district you're in gets, you know, equal, just a little bit less than special. And then it goes into all kinds of, you know, the different, you know, fire districts. You know, library, all kinds of crazy stuff, but that's minute at the end of the day. The problem with it is what the rumor is now is that it'll be frozen in 2024, but not necessarily frozen completely because the school districts will have the right to increase their taxes if, if due. So, so <laughs> your property tax will freeze for all until the school districts raise the tax. Raise their tax, yeah. So, uh, but the fire district and the police district and, and whatever. Are all frozen. Those will stay frozen. But yeah. the schools, to ensure that they still get their money. It's kind of what I'm thinking is it's the – because those – they were the proponents on this the day it came out. It said absolutely never. You know, we'll go You're broke. kill us. Yeah. yeah. We're going to go broke or our schools are going to be crumbling. Um, so they, there's still that provision that they could raise their rates. Um, and I'm not sure if that's to a vote. Of the you know district, or if it's just a mandate that the state says, hey, you could raise taxes and go forward. So that's the question today. So the it it, it will freeze the bulk of it, but there's the possibility it still could go up. At age sixty two, yes. Now people are living longer and longer these days, and by the age sixty two, do do you think most people have their house paid off, or, or no, is that so, not even? No, I mean I'd say the bulk is sixty five is what they shoot for. Um, there's a bunch of people that have their house paid off when they were, you know, 30. <laughs> right. Um, but the bulk of people will shoot far 65 being paid off. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, depending upon your interest rate today, because in the past it was like, eh, you could go make money in the market, but you were paying, you know, 2 percent, 7 percent, something like that. Today it's the flip. If you have a low interest rate, keep it. Don't right. pay it off. Yeah. Try to make money in the open market as you go forward. With any point in time, so it's best to have the best of both worlds, which would be the house or the property, and cash equal that you could pull at any point in time to go pay it off in full. That's the ideal situation. Right. Well, that's uh, it's interesting because um, you know if if somebody's sixty two, and I don't know Jeff, how long do people live? Um, 
80s, mid 80s. 80s. You know? Yeah. My grandma lived to be your mid 90s. Mm-hmm. Uh, so good luck, mom. Uh, <laughs> we're pulling for you. Um, but this could be 30 years worth of, oh, yeah. you know, assess so, values that, that, that the school the state, the schools are missing out on. Yeah. And that's the problem is. And they depend upon that money for the school districts. But then you get into this, uh, I'll say, volley where somebody that's 65, 70 says, hey, my kids haven't been in school for a million years. Sure. Why um, am I paying? Why am I paying? Yeah. And you go, yeah. I mean, you, you could even use that argument. I would argue um, that for all taxes, you know. It, 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 well, <laughs> why do I have to pay these? You could even say, hey, my kids went to parochial schools um, and I had to pay that tuition, but yet I still paid the taxes to, you know, Parkway. Sure. Um, you know, and they never said, oh, wait, we owe you money. We're going to write yeah, you a check Oh, you send your kids to private school? Yeah. <laughs> here's, your, here's your money back. So, um, so, again, there's a whole big debate on this. But I still think that the schools need the dollars because, I mean, that's whole, that holds some neighborhoods together because they got awesome school districts. Man, what if you, there's a lot of neighborhoods out there. And I know gentrifying happens. Mm-hmm. Eventually well, everywhere. But yeah. there's a lot of neighborhoods out there where there's probably a lot of older people. Exactly. Um, and they're the only ones there. They're the only ones there. So if it freezes, then that district would be stuck. It's a black hole for yeah. the district. I mean, just uh, they're in trouble. And it yeah. won't take – I mean, because, again, if you got to replace the uh, HVAC system for an entire school, kind of big deal. But you – but they're still paying their 2024 assessed. Yeah, it's whatever – Every year. Exactly. So whatever, they're still paying. Whatever they assess for 2024, which the suspicion is it's going to skyrocket. But can you imagine, and and just let's just say that somebody lives to be ninety, mm-hmm. and we'll just ninety-two, thirty years. Mm-hmm. What was your house worth thirty years ago, cool. and would you like to be paying the assessed value on that? Yeah, <laughs> our, our first house was like sixty-one thousand, and we thought we were buying the Taj Mahal, right? You know, and. And then you look at that payment back then, you're like, oh, it was like $480. You're like, wow, I wish I had that today. <laughs> right. In, in real world, like if I ran across somebody who's got a, a giant house and they say, well, I'm only paying assessed value on 60000 of it, <laughs> I would say, well, that's wrong. But that's kind of the way that this is written. This is kind of – and what they're what – they're, I think the concept is it's far – I say older people that are on fixed income, yep, yep, and their taxes keep, I mean, skyrocket. I've had and that makes sense. I've had okay. three three years of my assessed value go through the roof. I'm talking twenty two plus percent a year. I mean, COVID sent house prices just insane. Up. So this year, whatever I get, I don't care what it is. I'm petitioning in St. Louis County. I don't care what I have to pay. Um, just I should have done it last year. I missed the deadline, got busy. It was sitting on my desk. When I finally opened it, I was like, oh, uh, it's not yeah. good. I missed yeah, it by two this, weeks. Oh, that was three weeks ago. <laughs> um, but I, I will, I'll fight it this year. And I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of people that are going to attempt to take a shot at it in 24 for what they raise it to. And, and the worst part is, and I don't know how true this is for county, is um, they're now trying to say that maybe they increase our real estate tax bill this year, 2024, so that St. Louis County can get a new building or oh, remodel yeah. the building. Right. So I, 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 I just have read just a blip of that and was like, huh, oh, I did cute. see that press conference. Yeah. So I don't know how true that is. If that's a 24 issue or a 25 issue. Um, so you say, oh, you know, it's probably 24 because once it's on there, then the county side of it jumps. They get what they need to build their building or remodel it or do whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we go from there. Well, that'll be interesting to watch this space. And, oh, yeah. And uh, state of Missouri had a budget surplus. Uh, is it safe to say that with the tax breaks and the, the property tax freezes that we could kiss that goodbye? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to come back. It's got to. Um, just it's a $301 million. And that's a projection, too. So they're not even full. I mean, that's just a real good guess. So it could well, come like, in at four hundred million. Well, they go. I, I love this dance. They go and they lower our taxes, only to realize, oh, we still need to pay yeah. for stuff, and then they raise them again. And they raise them again. So yeah. it's like, well, if so you just it, kept them well, steady. But you did get a little bit of a reprieve for a year, year and a half, right. where they were lower. So you go, thank you, you know. Yeah. But 
then they, as long as they don't skyrocket 25, 26 to offset what they got going, that's a whole other we'll okay. ball game. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's go to commercial break. And when we come back, a couple more things that we want to talk about. Do you want to split your refund up to three different bank accounts? And yes. I say, Jeff, why would I ever need to do that? <laughs> and you say, well, are you divorced? Yeah. And then uh, we go from there. 636 636- 394-5524 is the phone number. CapitalAdvisoryGRP.com is the website. Jeff Zufall, Senior Tax Strategist and Wealth Advisor with Capital Advisory Group. Are you, what are you doing to lower your tax bill every year? And if your answer is nothing, I say go see Jeff because we did 1200 bucks the first year, 2400 bucks. Yes. And this is cash. This it's is cold real. cash this in your pocket. This is stuff that we could go to Disney with. Yep. And I would say if you're not taking advantage uh, of an FSA to pay uh, for school like we were doing, or if you're not socking money away in a 529 and you want to pay for your kid's school and you're not doing that, then you're missing out. And that's plain and simple. You are missing out on money. You're putting more, giving more money to the federal government. Than what you're legally obligated to. So don't stop, you know, stop doing that and go see Jeff, 636-394-5524. Keep What Yours continues with Josh Gilbert and Jeff Zufall. Back on the show, just a couple more minutes here to spend with Jeff Zufall, Senior Tax Strategist and Wealth Advisor with Capital Advisory Group, 636-394-5524. Tis the season. Uh, it's, you know, it's like Jeff's Christmas if Christmas was uh, terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst 90 days of your life. No. But, you know, you got plenty of golf to play in, in That's right. uh, August. And There's already September. a couple set for uh, April 16th, 17th, 18th. 19th. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to get out of here? What, you always take a week after. Yeah. Typically uh, a week. Um, go disappear someplace. Yeah. Come back to life. Yep. So. I, I get it. You know, my I got a friend that's married to a, a tax preparer, and she says, you know, we don't get to see him for three months. That's right. <laughs> then when he comes out, it's you know, it's, needs a week to get your head screwed back yeah, on straight. You're <laughs> like bears hibernating. Yep. Yeah. Um, but this is the season, and, and this is the way it goes. Do you want to do that to yourself? Yeah. I, <laughs> I'll be the first to say I don't. So yeah. that's why I have Jeff do it for me. And he can do it for you, too, 636-394-5524. You told me that we can split our refunds up to three different bank accounts. And my first yes. my first question was, oh, interesting. And my second question was immediately, why would I want to do that? So let's say that the end of last year, um, you guys, you, you're, you're divorced currently, but you're, you were still married in 23. So whatever your filing status is on the 31st of December is how you have to file. So let's say that you get a refund, but you're divorced, but you got a joint do uh, you got a filed married filing jointly for 2023, and there's money on the table as a refund. You could have it sent 50 50 to two different bank accounts. No, I'm sure that that you guys say, all right, now what bank account do you want me to put it in? And both uh, now divorced oh, okay. husband and wife say, oh, send it to mine. Yep. Oh, send it to me. <laughs> in uh, the past, that's what you had to do, and then one of them would actually have to cut a check to the other one yeah. and make sure everything was on the up and, and up. And that tax return come back? No, I haven't seen it. You know. Yeah, it's like, oh, what did we file? No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you could have it sent up to three bank accounts. There's a, a form. There's something new. Never knew this existed. Um, but you can do it to three bank accounts. How about that? Yeah. Um, is it more beneficial to file married jointly? Than um, typically, single? typically the only time that we see married filing separately, mm-hmm. um, very rare occasions, but typically you're doing that because maybe you're waiting for a student loan uh, if you do your 10 years and it's income-based. Um, if you're a nurse, I think it's seven years. Don't quote me on the years, but there's a, a time frame. Basically, they will waive your your student loans. Oh, cool! Um, yeah. But you got to you do married filing separate um, because it's income based for your repayment, and then a time oh, clock starts ticking. Yeah, because you um, married filing jointly. Now you're adding my income. Exactly, yeah. income gets added, and it's a higher monthly payment back for the student loan. So, um, is this something that people bring to you, or yeah. is this something that you are suggesting to them? Oh no, it's when they bring it and they say, "Hey, um, you know, I got a hundred fifty thousand dollar loan." For a student loan, um, but I'm going to be a nurse, and somebody said I could do this program, then boom, it's automatic. Go, hey, look, this is what you got to do. Um, and when you hit your threshold, I've seen it multiple times where nurses, exclusively nurses, 
to pay for their nursing school if they make it seven years, I believe. At seven years, whatever their their student loan debt is, is Poof. done. Boom. Wow. How non- about that? And non-taxable, too. So usually if you get a freebie, it's a basically a 1099C shows up, which is cancellation of debt. You pay tax on whatever you were relieved of, like I credit cards. I want one of those. If you credit card, if you go to them and say, hey, I'm bankrupt, I can't pay, and you owe the credit card company ten grand. They're going to fire you a 1099C, which is cancellation of debt for that 10000 bucks, hmm. and you pay tax on it. Oh. Yeah. So in some cases, the tax is <laughs> – I literally just told you I can't pay my bills. And then they drop this you on wanna, you. <laughs> you want to tax me. Now, it's going to be lower because if you're at 10%, 15%, sure. it's 10 or 15% of ten grand, not the full ten. grand. i got to pay taxes on debt cancellation. Yeah. That's why typically, but in in this situation where it's student loan, your your result, you don't, yeah, you don't. It does not Ooh, come I back love on that. You. So I love that, yeah. uh, and you wouldn't know it unless you talk to Jeff Zufall. Yes. Maybe somebody in your nursing school had mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, or they say, "Hey, worry about this because it's an out down the road." You know, it's awesome. Uh, yeah. So, and then I think the other thing to, to address or really look at is if you do your own tax return and you do not e file. Um, which I would strongly, strongly, strongly advise you to e-file. Don't mail it in unless you are forced to, or it's an amended return, and in some cases you can't e-file the amended return. Make sure that when you send it, um, use a delivery service that you can, A, track it, and B, you have proof of delivery. So a lot of people will say, well, I may put it in the mail. <laughs> yeah. It goes into a black hole, and who knows who got it. But if you use the USPS system, and you go into the office and hand, they say, exactly. "Would you like a we'll proof go to, of cause, delivery?" Because most of these addresses are all PO boxes. I mean, it's Internal Revenue Service, you know, Kansas City, Missouri, and it's PO box, whatever. You can't like ups. You can't send that because it doesn't have a street address. Mm-hmm. But if you go get return receipt from the post office, literally, you will get notification that it's received. Gotcha. Um, so just something. Don't, you don't want to be sitting there saying, well, I sent it. And yeah. And realize it never got. So I've seen this. Fell m- between. Many a times where somebody has it. It's in an envelope. It's postmarked. So you use a, a meter, a mail meter. So it's got the postmark. They take a picture of it as they're tossing it into the post, uh, the box itself. Problem is you don't know where, if, if anybody ever gets it on the other side. Mm-hmm. You know you mailed it. Um, you know that you made the cut in a sense. The problem is going to be is where to go. Yeah, and especially so, if you're taking all this time to do it, you want to make yeah. sure it gets there. So just make sure. I mean, even if you have to get uh, – there is a street address for like the state of Missouri. It's like High Street or something like that, um, which is the Missouri taxation. You can get that and you could you know, FedEx or UPS a package. You know that it was delivered. You get the, the kickback. So Yep, the tracking and yeah. all that stuff. So uh, good – Good point of reference, and uh, just know that the IRS doesn't want paper. They don't want you to mail it in. It is kryptonite to the IRS, so. literally kryptonite. Somebody has to touch it. Um, it takes – this. the people laugh at me when I say this. It takes two months longer to get a response, um, and in some cases even longer than that, where it sits on a desk in a gigantic pile and slowly, mm. you know, somebody's going to get to it. Yeah, so. so if you can file electronically through Jeff yes. Fall or through whatever, um, try not to send paper uh, as best you can. And if you've got any questions, give Jeff a call, 636-394-5524. Capital Advisory Group, Jeff Zufall, Senior Tax Strategist and Wealth Advisor with Capital Advisory Group. This is Keep What's Yours. Keep more of your money in your pocket, in your bank account. In your savings account and less going out to the federal government. Yes. That's the name of the game. Name of the game. (laughs) We'll do it all again next week. You betcha. Jeff, thanks so much. Thank you. You've been listening to Keep What's Yours with Josh Gilbert and Jeff Zufall, Senior Tax Strategist and Wealth Manager at Capital Advisory Group. To learn more, call 636-394-5524 or visit CapitalAdvisoryGRP.com. The views and opinions expressed in the preceding paid program are those of the host, callers, and guests and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of this station, its management, or owners.